In semi-celebration of our 25th anniversary here on Tennessee Crossroads, we're dusting off some of the stories in our archives to share with you. And here's one Al Vex brought us back in 1998. It's all about a family in West Tennessee that gets swept away carrying on a century-old tradition of making brooms. Most of the time when we go to the store to buy something, we investigate the product to make sure we get the best value for the price. But not always. There are some items we just grab off the shelf and move on. Now, one of those items that we do that to could be this, a broom. You see, a broom is a broom is a broom, right? Well, let's not be too hasty in that judgment. You see, this is not just a broom. It's a Hockaday handmade broom. And it's made today just like the first one was made in 1916. Jack and Dee Martin are now in charge of the Hockaday Broom Company. And while the name is different, it's still a family business. Well, starting, uh, of course, with my great-grandfather, Will Hockaday, my granddad, Jack, myself, and then I've got my daughter and my uh, three grandkids. So we've got five generations in the family, all different names, but it's still all Hockaday. We started, I just never, never wanted to change the name. Uh, started Hockaday, and everybody in the area knew Hockaday, and so we've always kept the name but it's still uh, family owned, family run. Not only are the brooms made the same way today that they were made in 1916, they are made on the same equipment. Virtually nothing has changed. Still works very well. Uh, built by my great grandfather, Will. Uh, my granddad used it. He showed me how to use it. We take extremely good care of it. Two main pieces, uh, an old fashioned wrapping table and a broom press. And that's the two main pieces that we use day in and day out. A broom is a broom is a broom. You mentioned high quality. What, what's the difference? Well, it's, it's of course, the way we put them together, it's the broom corn. It's all the different things that I do to make my brooms last longer. Uh, uh, I use no chemicals, of course, in growing the broom corn. It's all naturally grown, all naturally air dried. Uh, we use only fertilizer just to grow the broom corn. Uh, once it's harvested, again, the air drying is the, is the big thing, makes the broom corn very flexible, uh, very durable, unlike different types of grasses used in um, a modern day mass produced broom that just comes apart a lot easier. Uh, broom corn is just a very tough natural fiber. D, what, what uh, Jack makes the brooms, you make brooms? Are you involved in this too? Um, yeah, I'm involved in some ways. I go out with him and help him locate the handles and I point them out and he cuts them. Uh, I do a lot of the stripping down and whittling especially of the twisted handles and the polyurethaning, sanding, things like that. Uh, also on small brooms I sew. Uh, I make little apron brooms with decorations and little uh, verses, little miniature things on them and little miniature mops and just sort of piddle. <laughs> A good broom begins with good broom straw, and even Jack admits it's a product that many people don't know about. Of course, broom corn was raised with originally a, a native African plant, and you can see as it grows, we have one long piece of straw that comes out the top. We have a little sheath that we just grab, pull it right apart, and then we have a, a one piece of straw. And then you comb the seeds out of it? Yes, sir. I have a little machine that I use to comb the seeds completely out. Once the seeds are combed out, you have the finished product there in your hand. And this is the beginning of a Hockaday broom? The beginning of a Hockaday broom. The broom that you are making today, is it basically the same kind of broom that your great-grandfather made? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The style uh, hasn't changed? Yeah, uh, style hasn't changed. It's, uh, the weight's the same. And we have about 15 basic styles of hearth brooms, uh, cobweb brooms, house and shop brooms. Then I take it to an old-fashioned machine uh, invented by the Shakers in the 1840s called the broom press. And I'll slide the broom into the press like a big jaw, mash it flat, and then I take an old-fashioned six-inch uh, stitching needle and I'll hand stitch the broom. And when I'm finished, it will last you for years. We turn out about 12 brooms a day on the old-fashioned equipment. And one motorized modern-day machine can turn out 12 dozen brooms a day. So it's strictly quality versus quantity. Are these brooms collectible items or are they functional items? We consider all of our brooms a good usable broom. I use them day in and day out. We have a lot of our customers who collect our brooms. We have 
brooms with hand carved faces, big elaborately twisted handles, uh, any type of broom you could imagine we make. Uh, we have a honeymoon broom, which is a broom on a fork. Uh, we have a wedding broom. You've heard of the tra tradition of jumping the broom. Uh, we can. Uh, we have customers that have old-fashioned brooms that they want me to fix for them. They bring in, I put a re-head on the handle. Uh, it's, just, it's a variety of different things that's made our business what it is. A lot of folks do collect them, but we just about everybody uses my brooms. Of course, Jack and Dee use all of this to make a living, but it's a little more than that. To them, they look upon this as preserving a little bit of what America is all about. I'm so glad that I'm pursuing, you know, a dream, trying to stay with something, a simple idea, made well, last a long time. I mean, America was kind of founded on those I ideas in a way. And uh, so I'm, I'm still staying with that idea, and it's working for us. We love what we're doing, or we wouldn't be doing this.